Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for attending this lecture. My name is Muchinetta Kapunde. I am the founder of Fashioner.com. I also um, consult with fashion brands about the merger of technology. Today, we're here to talk about denim. Um, this is a space that I have been writing about for the last couple of years. Um, and my interest in denim has been mainly to do with the fact that it's, a, it's a basically a space that is changing tremendously in the last um, 24 months in terms of sustainability and also in terms of adoption of technology. I, start, um, I love to start my lectures with facts. Um, facts are usually a great way of either shocking people or giving people like great information and numbers. Um, as most of you most likely know, when it comes to denim, um, it takes a lot of water, you know, to produce that pair of jeans that you're wearing. Um, and this has become a really big problem with regards to sustainability and with regards to waste. So when it comes to their adoption of technology, I have found that the denim industry has really um, been able to look for solutions to help solve this problem. Like I said, the good news is it's happening. Um, it's one of those industries that I have personally found, because I write a lot about the merger of fashion with technology, that are open to adopting new solutions, um, are open to finding new ways to dye their product, or new ways to produce, or new ways to kind of um, change their supply chain and how they do business. And this is a good example of a, a It takes a lot of water and energy. energy create denim's recognizable indigo shades. Wrangler has developed Indigo, a sustainable new way to transfer dye onto yarn. The process uses foam to create a beautiful, deep indigo color by using no water at all, and wastewater is virtually eliminated. That's a water reduction of 100%, and there's more. Both energy and waste are reduced by more than 60% compared to conventional denim dye. That's a revolutionary step for the entire denim industry, and we'd like to share it with the world. I wanted to use this particular popular and well-known brand as an example because it's showing that the conventional ways of um, producing denim has now changed, and it needs to change. And there's a lot of big brands, and also small ones as well, um, that are making these changes. So the denim industry, I like to say, are on a path to redemption. Basically what I mean is that they are listening to the consumer concerns about how they produce jeans and denim and so forth. Um, they're doing this by exploring their supply chain and trying to figure out how various innovations and solutions can help them produce denim in a much more ethical manner. Uh, one of the tools that has been used has been this sustainability impact report, which came out in 2020. Um, I recently took a look at it, and I think a lot of the stuff that they've mentioned in this particular report are still very much relevant to today. And I think it's a great way for someone to, who needs guidance and who needs to figure out what it is they need to do in terms of taking action. I'm, not sure, I'm sure most of you probably popped into the blue zone, and some of the brands that you'll see there are basically the force for good. By this, I mean that they are taking action in helping the industry improve its, um, its standards when it comes to water waste, when it comes to being more sustainable and more ethical. It's super important that today's denim brands make an impact. It's about being accountable and being transparent. And these are two words that I used in my last lecture yesterday, because I do feel like the industry does need to take accountability, because once you recognize the problems, you are able to then find the solutions. Also, I feel it's, it's really important for brands to be transparent. They use chemicals to produce genes, but I think it's super important to show consumers what it is exactly in the materials that you use. The sustainability part of Nudie Jeans has been with us since day one. Responsibility for what we do has always been a purpose. It's based on what we believe is right and wrong. As a person, you often have moral boundaries where you refrain from things, even if you're allowed to do them. I've never understood why there's so much lack of that mechanism in our industry. Because what it means is just plain and simple responsibility. 
for the products you put out there and the consequences it creates. I mean, really, in one way it's easy. Try not to be an asshole. We're an independent company, so we're allowed to do what we want. We believe in taking responsibility. So for us, it's the natural thing to do. Our vision and mission is an ever ongoing journey. And that is to be the most sustainable denim company in the world. I included this particular brand in my presentation because I really like what they stand for. I mean, I can stand here and tell you what the denim industry needs to do and how they need to do it and the actions that they need to take. Place by Phil. When you hear it from somebody who's actually in the industry, it hits home a little more. So what are the solutions? Um, like I said earlier, I write a lot about the merger of fashion with technology. So I'm a big fan of pushing new technology solutions to brands who are looking for that type of information. So let's start with this particular um, solution. I'm sure most of you are, are very much aware of them. Um, they have been on a mission to transform the textile industry, and they have come up with technologies that are helping very many businesses change the way that they do their business. that video, I don't know if air is the future, but what I wanted to leave with you is the idea that we need to find an alternative, whether you are sold on this or whether you kind of think about using something else, it all comes down to one thing, it's time to make that change. This is another company from the Netherlands um, that's all about traceability. Um, it's super important for businesses today to be able to showcase how they produce their product, to, show, to know what factory it's from, what's in the materials, down to the button that was um, sewed on the pair of jeans. So this particular technology is all about transparency and helping brands be transparent. This is a sweater created out of recycled materials. And this sweater saved about 3,500 liters of water. Refreshing, but how can we be sure this sweater is as green as it claims to be? Well, that's where we come in. Let me explain in four steps. Step one, activation. This is real recycled fiber created from textile waste and discarded plastic bottles. We mix the fiber with special microscopic tracer particles, our unique traceable fingerprint. The fingerprint corresponds with a secure digital passport that contains all data about this recycled material. This passport is safely stored through blockchain technology. This makes aware recycled materials completely fraud-free. 
Step two, produce. A wear yarn can now become anything made by any nominated supplier you'd like to work with. Whether it's a hat, a coat, a bag, a pair of socks, or a sweater. So working with Aware, you have total freedom of supply chain. Step 3. Scanning. With a simple scanner, we can detect our unique fingerprint in the fabric of the final product. Step 4. Authentication. If our fingerprint is detected, the recycled material used for this product is matched to the safely stored original data in blockchain. It's as easy as that. A simple and transparent supply chain with no dirty secrets, which gives you and your customer complete peace of mind. A true story from start to finish, told by the fabric itself. Whenever I talk about this type of technology, people always say to me, but why do I need this? I can just tell people you know, what's in my fabric, where it was manufactured. Um, but I do believe, especially in the fashion industry, if that was so, people would do that. But unfortunately, you know, the industry can be quite secretive about what they do, or they're just completely unaware about the conditions in their factory, or completely unaware of the, what's in their materials, uh, or completely unaware of what to do at the end of life of their product. So I personally am a massive big fan of this type of technology. Another one you can check out is called E.ON, which is spelled E-O-N. They're a New York startup who are really pushing forward the idea of giving products a passport, a digital passport. In this digital passport, there's information that gives the consumer um, what the materials of that product is, what can I do with it in terms of end of life, has anyone else owned it, you know, stuff that some people really want to know. Um, and I think it all comes down to giving consumers and your customers the option of the knowledge, because there are some people who probably don't really want to know. But for me, it's always the option. Give them the option of knowledge and use technology to do so. Um, this is another company, which I am sure they're, um, they're in the blue zone, so you can actually go and check them out. Uh, let me just play the video and then we can talk about their technology. Microfibers are a problem, not only just for the denim industry, but also just generally the materials. And I loved what they do in terms of the solution they offer because it actually tries to tackle this problem. Um, and one thing I do want to add, actually, uh, before I continue, is that these solutions are not 100%. Um, you know, nothing really is. But what they are doing is pushing us forward towards a future that's a bit more um, sustainable and also ecolog uh, ecological and green. Collaboration. Um, no one at all can do it all by themselves. I'm a massive believer in this because of the fact that um, a lot of the solutions are coming from people outside the industry. If you take a look at the fashion industry and the solutions that they're adopting, some of it is from scientists, from engineers. These are not fashion people. These are people that are looking at a problem and solving it. So when it comes to collaboration, I really think this is something that will push forward change. When you collaborate with somebody who has the knowledge that you need, the solution to the problem that you're having, you're able to work together to create a product that actually answers a lot of problems that are taking place in the world. This is a collaboration with Levi Strauss, and um, it's one that made me realize that they found a way to reshape how we view denim. Over the past 30 years, we've approached finishing with a lot of labor-intensive steps, 18 to 20 for, for every finish. We've created this new process that relies on laser technology that reduces that to three. This is something that we're scaling across our entire denim supply chain. This is going to be our new operating model. We are all in. The original tenet of this whole approach was to maintain our authenticity. 
But there's a lot of detail in a vintage gene. So our first step in the new process is to photograph the gene. And then we take that and illustrate it in a way that the laser can interpret. So what used to happen traditionally in 8, 10, 12 minutes with manual applications, we can now execute with the laser in 90 seconds or so. Finishing is more than just making a new gene look like an old gene. It's really taking all the creative juices from our designers and bringing to life their ideas into a final product. This is actually a vintage gene that we've replicated. We got the damages, whisker pattern, the unevenness crackle. Pretty damn good match. So in the future, rather than producing and inventorying all 40 of these finishes, we'll only produce this and then we'll wait. So everything from that black line to this black line is possible off of that base only with a laser file and a post wash. With this new process, we're actually able to, to get after some of the key challenges in our business. What typically could take us six months going from concept and design all the way to market week, we're able to actually reduce that by several months. Levi's has always been passionate about sustainability. This project will push the industry to create a cleaner gene. Where we lead, others usually follow. When we built Eureka, we realized that we had a unique opportunity to redefine the future of jeanswear. Opportunity like this only comes maybe once in a career, once in a lifetime. We're very excited. If you're thinking to yourself, well, I'm not Levi, how am I going to be able to collaborate with anybody? I would recommend that you go to the Blue Zone because I've walked around there because um, I'm I love writing about um, the denim industry, so I always want to learn what's new and what people are talking about. And the amount of innovations that I have seen there have been really, really uh, eye-opening. And also, they're willing to work with people. And I think that's what it is. A lot of people, when it comes to innovations and technology, they're always assuming that these particular types of companies want to only work with the big boys, but the truth of the matter is, they want to work with the industry as a whole. This is another company called Sorty, and they collaborated with The Fabricant. Um, I don't know if you've heard of The Fabricant. They are um, a digital fashion company that are showing a different way to present your product. It's no longer about a physical product. It's about a product that exists in the digital world. Take a look. because everyone's talking about the digital world. Everyone's talking about a product that doesn't exist physically, but can actually only exist in the digital world. The reason why I think this is super important when it comes to showcasing your product, your denim product, is that sometimes, especially with the pandemic, you're not always able to go and see people, but yet you want to showcase a brilliant product, you want to show how it moves, you want to show that you know, information like how they were doing it here, and imagine being able to showcase your product this way and being able to showcase how the, the fabric folds and how it looks a certain way. Also, people want more than product these days. They want an experience. 
Um, yes, sure, people are still old-fashioned and traditional and quite like the idea of touching a fabric. But we're living in a world that's a bit unpredictable right now, where change is taking place. So if you, I think it's very important to be open to other options of presenting your product. Um, and also, it's quite a sustainable way of doing it, too. Uh, my favorite words again, accountability, uh, which are, I've partnered up with responsibility and sustainability. Um, it's super duper important for people to be responsible and to ask the right questions, um, to ask human centric questions as well. And um, this is a company here that is, a, I think is a great example of that. Cytex is a Vietnam-based denim manufacturer. We have five factory locations, uh, all in the same industrial zone in Bien Hoa, Vietnam. We have the processes such as sampling, merchandising. Uh, we receive fabric, we'll relax it. Uh, that then goes into the cutting and sewing stages, uh, dry processes, laundry and wet processes, and then finishing and packing. Cytex is uh, very focused on sustainability. Uh, our owner, Sanjeev Bell, has always pushed for uh, sustainability to be at the core of our operations, um, even more than what the brands would ask for. What really makes Cytex special, for example, is uh, what we do with water. So water is a major issue in denim manufacturing. This is because the very large volumes of water that is used and also all the chemicals that end up in the water. But uh, we have this system that we invested in in 2012. It's called an ETP, Effluent Treatment Plant. And this means that we combine bacteria, uh, reverse osmosis, evaporation, and nanofiltration to perfectly clean all the water and put it back in the system. So I think that um, a major issue in the fashion industry is that there are so many different players and they're not connected together enough. So there are designers sitting down in some country, maybe in the US, that design a certain garment having no idea about what their decisions will mean for the environment and for the people. And also there's a lot of lack of information and lack of transparency, particularly in the bottom tires. Um, there's so many different players and so many different suppliers that I understand why brands find it difficult to manage all this and to impose high standards, but they really should. I really want to try and uh, do LCAs of different products for different brands and showing them to our customers and showing them how all these garments were made at Cytex but they all have very different impacts so how their design decisions uh, actually have a lot of make a lot of difference uh, in in the production and in the environmental impact I think that data really is the solution to allow customers to make informed decisions because even now, certain consumers really want to buy sustainable clothes, but they don't know what to do, or brands really play with certain concepts, for example, organic cotton, but then they don't say anything else about the rest of the processes, but a garment made with organic cotton can still be very unsustainable. We have always uh, tracked all our consumption in terms of water and energy and chemicals and uh, worked really hard to reduce all our impact. But now, thanks to EcoChain, we will be able to connect this data to specific products and specific processes to understand where to focus the most. Even though it's great that this particular company has sustainability at the core of their business, I didn't show it so everyone feels like, ooh, a bit inferior because maybe they do not have it to the extent that they have it. I showed that to show that it is possible to get to that point. Um, it's all about taking baby steps, asking the right questions, finding out which tech solutions work best for you. You can start with solar panels 
on your on you know on your um, factory or whatever it is that you use and and kind of do baby steps towards it and one thing I do want to kind of be clear about is that various tech solutions can help you get there um, and do not fall into the trap of grabbing and embracing technology for technology's sake. Um, it's super important to look at what's available, look at your customer, look at what it is that you want to reach and then pick the innovation that works for you. Um, so I know brands such as this one or even boyish jeans are actually built with sustainability at the core of their business plan. But you've got old school denim brands that kind of have, haven't got that. So some people have to start somewhere. And I always think that take your baby steps and know exactly what it is that you're looking for. And that's it. I hope I've given you a really good overview um, of what the denim industry is doing in terms of changing and adopting sustainability. Um, I hope that you guys have taken note of some of the companies that I think are doing great things. Um, and if you've got any other questions or you would like to kind of touch and feel and learn a bit more about innovation, please pop into the blue zone because I myself who write about these things learned a lot and I picked up a lot of information from there as well. Thank you all very much for listening. You're very kind. Thank you.